Welcome to our Blackboard discussion on marginal costs. Marginal costs have to do with companies. We're going to draw a company right here. This company is going to produce ice cream. Now the ice cream is going to come out the back door here in tubs and this is the manufacturing plant. For economists, when they look at a company and costs, in the first instance they think of the short run and the short run is defined by the fact that you cannot change your capacity size. You cannot change the size of these fixed assets. However, you can change the output by changing the number of your variable resources. And in this case, we're going to look at variable resources as people. Here are some people here. In other words, in order to start producing ice cream, we have a plant, we have a little uh, ice cream machine here, but we don't have any people. These are our variable resources. So let's add somebody in here. Let's take this guy. He's going to stand in front of this machine here. He's going to push some buttons over here, and that's going to produce ice cream. And out the back door here is going to come tubs of ice cream. He's going to work there all day making ice cream. And out it's going to come here, and our plant's functioning just fine. Now, what we're going to do is measure how productive this person is. We're going to measure how productive our variable resources are. Well, to begin with, we had a time when we had how many variable resources? Zero. What was our total productivity, our total productivity when we had zero resources? Zero. We couldn't produce any ice cream. Now what's happened? We've actually added some variable resource. We can think of this as labor now. When we add one person, what's our new total productivity? Ten. We can produce ten big tubs of ice cream by adding this person. Now, the interesting thing about this is we can measure the marginal productivity. The amount of increase or decrease, but mostly increase in total product associated with each additional unit of labor. In this case, we go from 0 to 10, so our marginal productivity is 10. Things are good. We're making our ice cream. But you know what? Let's add some more variable resource. Let's take this guy here. We're going to put him here, and he's going to help this guy out. What he's going to do is take this milk bottle here. He's going to pour the milk into this big cooking vat here. And then that's going to come down here, and he's going to push his buttons. And out they're going to produce some more tubs of ice cream. Oh, it's going to be good. And as he does this, these guys are to become specialized. This guy is specializing in pushing buttons on this machine. This guy learns a lot about pouring milk in vats and getting them just the right temperature. But now we have two people working. And the total productivity, the amount of ice cream they make is 25. The marginal productivity, the additional total product from adding an additional person is 25 minus 10, which is 15. That's our marginal productivity. I'm pretty happy. I'm paying them the same price, same wage, and yet the marginal productivity is going up. I think I'll add a third person. Let's take this woman here. She's going to stand back here in the factory. Her job's going to be twofold. She's got a little uh, uh, binder there. She's going to log the milk as it comes in. She's going to push the crates over to here, and then this guy's going to take the milk, put them in the vat. This guy's going to push his button. So she's kind of like a manager worker. That's our third person. What happens to total productivity? Well, or total product, we go up to 45 units of ice cream coming out of the back here. Let's add the more ice cream per day being produced back here. It's piling up and putting on crates. Probably gets shipped on a big truck and goes out in that direction. And now what do we have for marginal productivity? How much increase in total product is associated with this additional person? Well, we went from 25 to 45, so that's 20 units. That's the marginal product. We can graph this marginal product on a graph like this. Here we have the quantity of labor, and here we have marginal product. The first person produces 10 units. The additional of total product is 10. The second person, the additional pro total product of adding the second person 
is 15. That would be about right here, see? 15. And the third person's additional total product is 20. Let's put that there. What do we have here? We have a line if you connect these dots going up like that. That's called increasing marginal returns. I'm pretty excited because I'm getting more ice cream produced every time I add somebody. I'm actually adding increasing amounts of marginal productivity. I think I'll hire somebody else. I'll actually hire this guy. He's going to come in here. He's going to help her by tracking and pushing and helping her get the milk and the flavorings over to this guy who puts them in a vat. And things are going to be good. But you know what? When we add our fourth person, we certainly get more product now coming out the back there. We get 60 units of ice cream coming out. So let's add those units of ice cream over here. So things are going well. I'm happy with my factory. I'm getting 60 units of product. But now when I look, what increase in total product has this additional unit of labor increased it? 15. Wow, that's not as good as 20. I wonder what's going on here. Various things go on. There's various ideas. What you have is this guy now is productive, but this manager person here can't quite keep track of everybody. As a matter of fact, when this guy's pushing his crates of milk over to here, he bumps into her. Productivity's not quite as fast. And as a matter of fact, when nobody's watching these two, they talk a lot about um, various things on TV. So productivity is higher, total productive product, but marginal productivity isn't as much. Let's add a fifth person. So we come out here, we hire this fifth person over here, and he starts, or she starts to work over here right at the end, and she's going to help us by taking the um, product, stacking it up, measuring it, and making sure it's okay, kind of quality control, but also helping the product come out the back door there. We end up with a total product by the end of the day of 70. So what has increased? Our total product has increased by 10. Let's see what's happened here. We've added a fourth unit. That fourth unit's marginal productivity is 15. Uh-oh. We've added a fifth unit. That fifth unit's marginal productivity is 10. Uh-oh. It's going back down. So we have marginal productivity increasing at first. Then we have decreasing or diminishing marginal productivity, which is also called diminishing marginal returns. Now. This is when we start to talk about marginal costs because what's going on is this marginal productivity is actually telling us something about marginal costs. For example, what's the marginal cost of producing this stuff? What's the marginal cost of producing a certain level of output? Well, the marginal cost is directly related to the marginal productivity. If it's paying the resources the same amount and you're getting more out of them, then your marginal cost is decreasing. And it comes down just to that point here where the marginal productivity starts to decrease. Then I'm not getting as much out of my workers, so my marginal cost, I'm paying them the same amount, but I'm not getting as much. See, I'm only getting 10 and 15. Here it was getting better, so my costs were going down, but now it's getting worse, so per unit I'm paying more, so my marginal costs go up. And it's this kind of V or U-shaped marginal cost curve that's going to drive a lot of our discussion about cost curves in the future. Now the point here is that with costs, it's the big point, is it's determined by the fact of decreasing marginal returns or the law of diminishing returns. This is the fact. This is the story. This is what's going on right here. At this point, we have diminishing returns to these increased units of labor. In the next Blackboard discussion, We'll talk about all the costs and relate marginal costs to average variable costs, average total costs, etc.